Good morning, YouTube. I'm sitting here at Jet Pets, waiting to pick up a horse. This is the lineup. <clears throat> but I thought I'd jump on here and chat with you guys about horsemanship for a little bit because that's what I do on this channel. Um, let's see, riding the lazy horse or the horse that's like behind the leg. <clears throat> that's a big one. I think a lot of us struggle with that. And if you ride enough horses, you know, that's something that we come across and is a constant struggle something constant that we're thinking about improving. Um, and also something that I've like changed and evolved, evolved with as I've um, grown as a rider. Um, one of the things that I think is really important as a plane takes off right there, <laughs> One of the things that's really important is having kind of an experimental approach with your horse. Like, and this is, I think this is really important for amateurs to know too, is like amateurs feel sometimes a little bit lost and a little bit like they don't have the answers. For me, I like to kind of reassure my people that that's a, a that sh we should become more comfortable with Look at this guy over here. Got the stroller and the dock. <laughs> we should become more comfortable with um, not knowing, not having the answers, and more comfortable with playing or approaching our horsemanship from a uh, open learning perspective. <clears throat> this does a few things. It helps us learn from our horses, um, adjust to fit the situation, find what works and what isn't working um, so that we can change and evolve with them. Now, when you have a trainer or you ride with somebody, um, I think that that's like idea generation. So sometimes you, you generate ideas or you find an approach that maybe is different than, than you've thought of before. How's it going? Um, okay, let's, let's jump into some of the more uh, detailed approach to riding the lazy horse. One of the things that I've focused on a lot is like your approach in terms of driving aid. So if you think of like leg means go, um, leg generates energy. That's a, that's a huge component. So how sensitive can I get the horse to an input of energy? I come with a driving aid. As another airplane takes off. <laughs> I come with a driving aid. How much is the horse responding to that driving aid? So like I want access to energy. I want to go from the walk to the trot. Can I get an impulse of energy? And I think it's wonderful and I love working on that. And that's a whole fascinating topic that we can talk a little bit more about. But um, another super important thing with the lazy horse that I think is most common overlooked thing is the connection. So if we have a horse that's really good in the connection, they should be taking us from the hind leg to the bit. Um, and so hind leg to bit connection means that we can actually eliminate the use of the leg. So think of it like a, a good rider gets a horse super responsive to the leg. A great rider gets a horse so you don't even need the leg. Or maybe, I don't know that that's true. Not that you don't need the leg, but that like you start using the leg less. And that's because they're just like, boom, taking you to the hand, taking you to the hand, taking you to the hand. And then your aid becomes less like leg means go because they're already taking you to the hand, if that makes sense. That means they're showing up like out to the connection on the, they're truly on the bit. And then the hind leg is under and they're coming out to that connection. Um, 
So thinking about it, when you're riding the lazy horse, how, or the horse that's not motivated to go forward, or I don't know that I want to categorize it as lazy, but you know what I mean. Um, really focusing on your feeling in the hand. Can I feel both corners of the mouth? Can I establish connection? Can I get them taking me to that connection? Can I use my diagonal aids using like inside hind leg under the body to that outside rein so I can like diagonally compress the horse and direct them with connection to the hand? Um, yeah, so if we establish really true, really pure connection, then, then our leg means less. Okay, let's talk a little bit about responsiveness to the leg. This is something that's been on my mind for a while now. Um, in dressage, oftentimes we think like, as we are working towards collection, let's see, let me start here. So. You think of a natural horse and, and a natural environment. They're going to be like when they're halt, they have no energy. As you go walking, they have a little more energy and a little more ground cover. As you increase speed, you change to the trot, you change to the canter. And as you decrease speed, you change to the trot, you change back to the walk. Um, so you have this very basic spectrum. Now in dressage, part of what we try to work on is confusing that spectrum in a, in a sense so that we can go like almost on the spot, but we're still in the gate of the trot. So we're changing less ground cover with more impulsion. Same with like a canter pirouette. Can we get... <laughs> can we get less ground cover with more, more impulsion, more activity? It's counterintuitive to the horse. They think like, if I'm gonna cover less ground, I'm gonna do use less energy. Um, so one approach to this is like, for example, the canter. If you're cantering and you're trying to teach collection, you're gonna bring them slower in the tempo, and then when they break to the trot, you're gonna get after them until they stay in the canter. And you're gonna to try to teach your horse their responsibilities in contrast to your responsibilities. Your responsibility is to, yes, you're, you may be aiding for the canter, your inside leg a little forward, outside leg back, but you're gonna be actually really passive with that aid. Um, you should be sitting quiet and your horse should be doing the work. And then if they break, you should activate them or get after them so that they start to comprehend their responsibility. Now, one thing that I think Let's go back to good versus great riders. Good riders ride like this. They say like, if you break, I'm gonna get after you and get you forward again. Um, great riders actually take the initiative to ride the transition and then go forward again. Riding that transition, so whether you're slowing them down and then speeding them up again, uh, gives you two ends of the spectrum. So I think of it as, deactivate so that you have a more positive position to apply a driving aid to activate um, and that goes like all the way through it one thing that i've really focused on in the last few years in my riding is like return all the way to the foundation we go so go all the way back to the halt then apply the driving aid get a response to the driving aid because ultimately the halt is the most optimum place to work from if you're gonna establish a good response to a driving aid. Most, most likely you can get them more responsive than a halt. And what you're looking for from your driving aid is added impulsion, added activity. So you're just renewing the, the most fundamental piece of the aid. <clears throat> you're confirming to your horse but by doing that okay so let me let me reiterate that good riders bring their horse back if they quit or they die they push them forward again great riders actually initiate the slowing down or the coming back all the way to the very foundation if that's the halt or the walk they're initiating that transition and then and then reconfirming the uh, 
activation. So it's super easy with the lazy horse, right? To get into the habit of like, go, 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 activate, 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 forward, forward, forward. And what I want you to think about or try with your horse is like, can you, if your energy is here, get where you balance your aids so you're going like slower, faster, slower, faster, slower, faster. Not just faster, 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 faster. That's gonna wear out your driving aid. Um, if you can get more balance to it where you're initiating slower, faster, slower, faster, and you're the one who's putting in the input to go slower, even on a lazy horse, come back to the halt, go, come back to the halt, go. Those transitions are gonna help you establish better communication with your horse. Um, yeah, that's been huge for me. Huge, huge, huge for me. Let's see, another another thing that comes to mind is like working on your... <clears throat> working on uh, that's a big one it's a big airplane working on your diagonal aids the feeling that you can get them yielding from the inside of the body connecting on the outside of the body um, this helps you just break it up where instead of going like leg to hand you can get them into the connection taking both both corners of the mouth filling up that connection in your hand and staying in front of your leg aid so if you go like down the long side shoulder four or shoulder in like you should have the feeling that you can really connect on both sides of the bit and they're taking you there from the hind leg um that's yeah that's that's a feeling that I search for in a way that I can connect them, that I can get like um, really positive, really pure leg to hand connection that then is circulating energy. Um, and, and when I talk about connection, this is something that I love that uh, as we become an amateur or a more basic understanding into a more advanced understanding. Connection isn't just about like the feeling you have in the hand. It's about the relationship in the hand and the bit through the horse's body to the hind legs. So it's like a whole energy circulation. Um, again, when we think about balance, it's not just static balance. I mean, you're not always in a halt. That would be static balance, no movement balanced. But it's like dynamic balance so that means that energy is flowing across the ground with ground cover um, so how do we develop balance self-carriage but also energy circulation connection throughness within that balance um, as I've talked about before on this channel one of the things that I came into horsemanship with one of the things I came in to dressage specifically with from the Western community was like, I want to do this with as much lightness and self carriage as possible. Um, and I want to preserve that. But one of the things that I've learned that I need in dressage is also like connection. And so I want to preserve my self-carriage. I want to preserve um, the feeling of lightness and softness. Um, I don't want a heavy horse, but I also need, need connection to uh, circulate that energy. If I'm disconnected, it's very, very hard for me to circulate energy. And if I'm not circulating energy, um, it's very difficult. Oh, there's a horse. Two horses. I don't know if you guys could see him. It's very hard for me to um, circulate energy if I have no connection um, because the energy goes through that rain and um, has a certain flow to it. So then I return back to the feeling that like you need to 
it's equally about the connection as it is the response to the leg.